Surf's up space ponies. Okay, so I had planned to do a video like this around uh, the beginning of January, but, um, you know, as uh, you may have uh, noticed in my other videos that I've been just rather busy, um, you know, we, we're kind of settling into our new home and everything, and uh, it's been quite a shock moving from a warmer coastal town to a ski town in the snowy mountains. So this is a bit delayed now that uh, it's, uh, February is almost over already, actually. So, um, okay, so I would like to do another q and A. I I did that a couple years ago and open up for some questions people may have of me. I'll post a link to the previous one uh, that I did. I think it was in 2015 or so. Uh, this time, though, I also want to do something different for a change. So I got this idea from my friend Rebels at Cloud, sorry Rebels at Cloud Nine, when he did a video like this a while back. Okay, so because this is the year 2017, here are 17 random things about me in no particular order of importance. I think many people know that my name is actually Greg and not Steve, but that doesn't count. Okay, so here we go. Number one. I'm left-handed. I think that this has come up several times already in my videos. Um, observation, no, you know, uh, observe. What's the word? Ob, 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 observative people. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's the word. I'm losing my English. Um, have have noticed that and have made comments of that. So uh, it's an interesting cultural thing living in Japan as a left-handed person because when Japanese people notice this they always point it out like it's a big deal uh, like you know as a teacher many times when I write on a chalkboard in classes for the first time I can hear whispered comments about how I am left-handed it's funny even sometimes students that I have been teaching for months and months when I write and all of a sudden they, they notice I'm left-handed it's kind of funny but uh, so in, in Japanese culture, being left-handed used to be viewed as something which needed to be fixed and corrected. But in recent decades, this bizarre mindset has been largely abandoned. Number two, I am colorblind. Red, glee, red green colorblind to be exact. This can be annoying to my wife at times. Uh, to me, the color brown is like a mix between red and green. I don't know if this is how normal people think of brown or not, but I see colors, but I just perceive them differently. Uh, you could take an Ishihara color test to see what I mean. Uh, for example, it, the thing on screen here, uh, normal people see the number 74 in this image, but I see the number 21. People who are completely colorblind cannot see any numbers at all. Take an Ishihara test, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I found this on Wikipedia. Uh, number three, I don't wear blue jeans. I haven't worn jeans for a very long time, and I no longer even own any. I just don't find them comfortable at all. Number four, I do not have a Facebook account, nor do I want one. I had vowed to never have one, but I had to create one for my previous job because I was responsible for updating the company's English Facebook account. Before I quit that job, I canceled my account. Where it asked for my feedback, I said something about how Facebook is actively silencing those who do not conform to Mark Sucker Punch's political bias, and I invited him to kiss my ass. Number five, I don't have a smartphone. I actually just recently got a new cell phone and I chose another basic flip phone. Uh, this one's a bit fancier than my last one because it has a built-in dictionary and I guess I can do some apps but I chose not to have like an internet service and I just don't want to use line. You know a lot, a lot of people they chat with each other online but you can't really shut it up I don't think. Uh, somebody told me you can't turn it off and I don't want that I just don't want to upgrade to a fancy schmancy scratch and sniff smartphone. 
I don't want to play games and such and I know that my daughter would run the battery down playing Puyo Puyo or Tsum Tsum if I had one. Google Maps is very useful and such and that one app that you know you can make it listen to a song and identify it that would be pretty cool and handy uh, but I'm really reluctant to upgrade to a smartphone I don't like how smartphones are so big and the screens can get damaged easily Misa clumsy I've seen so many people with cracked screens on their smartphones I don't like that uh, I especially don't like how expensive they are and the service becomes more expensive and you just can't go back once you get used to having a, a cell phone, a smartphone. You just can't go back. Okay, number six. I'm from Arizona. I can't really notice my own accent, but some people have commented that they could hear it. Uh, when I was a kid, I think many native Arizonans would say the word roof as actually rough. Rough, just the way your mother likes it, Trebek. Uh, so that has changed. I think the demographics have changed in the Phoenix area, and there's not a whole lot of, you know, rural native uh, Arizonans, I guess. Um, many people have moved to the Phoenix area from out of town or out of state. To me, I don't think that I speak rather differently than other Americans, although I do admit that Arizonans tend to speak more slowly. It is a benefit for me since I am an English teacher and I and you know speaking slowly is a virtue, but if you get me into a nerdy conversation about like which Starship Enterprise is my favorite, then I tend to speak more quickly. As a teacher, I introduce many things about my home state to Japanese students and there are so many places I regret not having visited when I lived in Arizona especially like Antelope Canyon, Window Rock and Tombstone. I wish I could have taken my wife up to see Monument Valley. Um, there are those who have what I consider to be a real Arizona accent like a co-worker from Flagstaff I once worked with. If you want to know what a real Arizona accent sounds like, you should watch the brilliant movie Raising Arizona, starring Nicolas Cage, Holly Hunter, and uh, John Goodman is in that as well. That was a Coen Brothers movie, I think. Um, it's not like a southern accent, but more of like a kind of like a subtle cowboy accent, I guess. Not like a Texan accent, but just kind of different. Um, anyhow, I haven't seen that movie in years. It, it cracks me up, but my wife couldn't really understand the humor in that movie. Um, so which leads me to number seven. I love movies with a bizarre, subtle sense of humor. Like, I really enjoy Wes Anderson films. One time while I was watching The Life Aquatic, I was cracking up and my wife asked me if it really was a comedy or not. She couldn't understand the humor. Japanese comedy is typically rather over the top. Like they kind of, you know, do it a little bit too much, I guess. And I think Japanese people don't grasp subtle humor very well. Although I did help her to appreciate Napoleon Dynamite. Um, I can't pretend to be like a real film connoisseur and each year the only movies that really get me excited are Marvel superhero movies um, also Wes Anderson of course uh, can't really pretend to be a hipster though just because I like his movies um, I've watched some other hipster movies like High Fidelity, Garden State, Broken Flowers and such and I really can't get into them uh, if I can claim any pretentiousness, in college I was really into Chinese films. However, it has been a long time since I've watched any of those. And believe it or not, I'm not the most excited about science fiction films. Actually, I think most science fiction films are pretty dumb. I'm getting tired of all these SF movie remakes, and I dread the idea of a new Back to the Future reboot. Uh, I'm not... I'm pretty apprehensive about this upcoming Blade Runner sequel and you know especially after Prometheus um, 
Ridley Scott, uh, he kind of just pissed that down his pant leg. If any movies need to be remade, like science fiction movies, my vote is for the movies that had a great premise, but either they had a flawed execution or they haven't aged well. My votes for SF movie reboots that could be done well, I think, are The Black Hole and Logan's Run. Number eight. I have never seen the movie Titanic. I just don't want to. People always freak out when I tell them, and they just incredulously ask me, You've never seen Titanic? My response is, What? You know, they have sex and the boat sinks. Three hours just to get to the good part? I don't think so. I saw the Mr. Plinkett review of Titanic, and I think that if the movie had remained as an action romance as it was originally intended to be, it may have been a better film. I just don't like the movie's message that cheating on somebody is perfectly acceptable and excusable as long as the other person's an asshole. I've often just, I don't know, I, I just don't like that idea. I, I've often thought that when I die, I want to have my tombstone read, Here lies Greg. He never saw Titanic. Actually, I wouldn't even care if I have a tombstone when I die. Uh, I think I'll make a request in my will that when I die, I want to have my body shot out of a cannon. That would be pretty cool. Number nine, I love science fiction novels. I cannot honestly pretend to be a prolific reader. I am a fairly slow reader, and I slow myself down even more by reading a few books at once. For example, like I'll be reading an uh, SF book while also reading books about history, religion, and health issues and such. I most recently finished Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Holy crap, that is such a fantastic book. I was thinking as I was drawing near the end that I would buy the second book in the series, but after I read the last page, my immediate impulse was to start over and reread it from the beginning. I've never had that experience before. The book is really that incredible. Uh, but I do want to read the sequel the Fall of Hyperion soon. Uh, a few years ago, I read A Fire Upon the Deep by Werner Vinge. That was pretty mind-blowing as well. Um, actually, the third book in that series was recently released, I think in 2012. And um, But, you know, I want to read the sequel, uh, Deepness in the Sky. I am also interested in reading The Engines of God by Jack McDevitt and Revelation Space by Alastair Reynolds. Um, I am sorry to say I have never read Asimov's Foundation series, and I want to read those, and also give Clark's uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey another shot. I tried reading that book in the fifth grade, but I lost track of it. If you have any fantastic SF books, please give me your recommendations. I often write reviews of books I've read on my homepage, stevethefish.net, under the Greg's Life section, so you can read those if you'd like. I haven't updated my homepage in a long time, though, um, but my homepage is the reason why I don't have a Facebook account. I just, yeah, I'd rather have, um, like, the, the menu-driven type stuff instead of a Facebook type of a layout. Okay, number 10. I am a grammar Nazi. Sorry to disappoint everyone, but I completely cringe when I read people's horrible mistakes. And my initial reaction is to question their intelligence. It's, it's funny, like, when I see people, they're getting into, like, political arguments. And they're like, you're an idiot. But, you know, it's spelled with the possessive pronoun. And not the 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 contraction you are an idiot it's just you're an idiot silly um, you know I'm not talking about random misspellings or confusing who with whom or whatnot but seeing people consistently making the same 
terrible mistakes as though they've slept through primary school just kind of makes me cringe. It's not could of, would of, or should of. It's could of, would of, and should of. They sound similar, but they're not the same. They're having their lunch over there. You know, it's just, come on. Uh, number 11. I'm not actually fluent in Japanese. A lot of people assume this, but I never majored in Japanese in college, and I've been mostly self-taught the entire time, aside from some side classes I took a long ago. Um, actually, I should probably spend more time playing video games, Japanese video games, in order to study the language more, but I don't really play much video games these days. Um, Currently, I've, I've been playing on my PSP. Um, um, I've been playing... A, oh, shoot. What is that game called? Uh, Grow Lancer. So, number 12. When it comes to music, I'm one of those annoying indie label snobs. Some viewers have picked up on the music I like by the songs that I might quote or stuff that I have in playing in the background, you know, like going back to my first model build video series for the, Hunt, the Tamiya Honda Fit. Uh, people have commented on the songs I like, you know, they heard like, you know, songs by the Shins or Bell and Sebastian or the Brother Kite. I try to be careful with music in my videos though, because uh, I don't want to get, you know, copyright infringements or whatever that kind of crap but there seem to be no problem with indie music in general I do not monetize my videos in any way so you know it shouldn't really matter too much and oh, as far as that you know copyright stuff goes all I can say is thank god the TPP is history uh, the bands that I listen to the most these days are Mahogany uh, from America they actually haven't released anything for 10 years unfortunately uh, more recently, I've uh, really get, been getting into a band called West Coast from Sweden, Moscow Olympics, which is a band from the Philippines, which has unfortunately kind of disappeared. Um, of course, I also really like Ringo Death Star from Austin, Texas, and my current favorite is Pink Shiny Ultra Blast from Russia. So, uh, number 13. I have been fluoride free for about 12 years now, and I haven't had a cavity the entire time. Fluoride is industrial waste, and it is not necessary for your teeth. And in fact, too much fluoride can cause fluorosis and hurt your teeth. Uh, actually, I had a guy contact me about this because I've made mention about fluoride in the water, and he actually works at a, at a water treatment plant. And he was saying that they use it to sanitize the, the water. And I said, no, that, that's crap. Because other countries, they don't use fluoride and everything's just fine. Uh, like where I live right now, you can kind of smell the chlorine. But, you know, if chlorine evaporates pretty easily. Fluoride is different. Uh, there is a Harvard study. And you can look this up online. It shows how fluoride has a negative effect on IQ development. Um, when I discovered how dangerous fluoride is, I switched to fluoride-free toothpaste, and I haven't regretted it since. Um, I recommend checking out a website called fluoridealert.org for education. Um, so how I learned about the fluoride and how bad it is for you, uh, that leads me into my next point. Number 14. I used to suffer from Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. Um, I developed it while I worked at IBM, and I woke up one morning and I couldn't move my arm. That was like, I think about in uh, 2004, I think. Or about, about that time, I think. Maybe like uh, January 2005. So yeah, I just woke up and I couldn't move my arm. And soon after that, the same thing happened to my... Uh, my, my left arm, or my right arm as well. I couldn't type or play video games without intense crippling pain shooting through my wrists. Uh, I started studying as much as I could about my condition. Uh, at first I was diagnosed with 
just regular tendonitis, but it kind of went from there. Uh, so as I was studying, I read a case study of how nearly everyone in a village in India, they suffered from carpal tunnel syndrome and how there was a horrible amount of fluoride in their water supply that was causing that that uh, that condition. It was around that time that I discovered by chance, just by total chance, that I had osteopenia. It's, it's not severe like osteoporosis, but it's not something a guy in his late 20s is typically expected to deal with. My doctor at the time tried to put me on Fosamax and you know, Americans, maybe you've seen commercials for that stuff. And that, that's, that, that's what they give to elderly women with osteoporosis. It's crazy. Oh my cow, that stuff is caustic. If you've read about it, it is nasty. It can burn a hole in your esophagus, you know? Um, it totally, you know, screw up your intestines as well. So I told my doctor, like, no thank you. And I said that I would just find a natural solution to my problem. And he and his family nurse practitioner, they were both telling me that I had no choice but to take it and that calcium supplements and replacing cycling with jogging in my exercise routine couldn't save me. But I proved them wrong a year later and improved my bone density. You know, I was taking like bone scans and everything. Uh, the, you know, you'd, you'd lay down on this, this pretty cool Star Trek looking bed and they would scan, you know, vertebra by vertebra. Um, and I improved and I now have normal bone density and through this process I learned that soy is not healthy for you and I used to be a real tofu nut and I would drink lots of soy milk because I was lactose intolerant uh, but soy actually is an anti-nutrient and it robs calcium from your body yuck um, it's also a phytoestrogen and is connected to Alzheimer's disease. I began to distrust modern medicine around that time and many of the health myths, you know, such as fluoride and soy being good for you. And I had become lactose intolerant, you know, like in the, in the early to mid 90s when I was in high school, uh, due to the American government allowing cow antibiotic injections along with growth hormones during the Clinton years, you know, in the milk. Uh, yeah, thanks to Monsanto, that company, it, it was responsible for both of those. And uh, I missed a lot of school days as a result. Because, you know, the antibiotics, you know, the, the growth hormones cause the cows to get infections, and then they end up giving them a whole bunch of antibiotics to prevent the infections and that is it winds up in their milk and in the meat and um, it kills off the the natural bacteria in your intestines and um, you can't digest lactose that way and it also wrecks your uh, immune system because that much of your immune system is in your in your intestines uh, so number 15 uh, this goes kind of like what I was just saying I'm fairly health conscious and while I cannot claim to be a very healthy person I at least sort of try I know some people are addicted to constantly eating junk food hamburgers and such and I I have a hard time relating to that I'm not opposed to eating hamburgers at all but if I do have one I'd rather eat a better quality one than garbage like McDonald's I mean at least Burger King kinda tastes better um, you know, in America, I would rather eat at Carl's Jr. Um, but actually, uh, in the Phoenix area, I, I discovered Lenny's Burgers. It's a private chain, although they're more like just associated. It's not a franchise or anything, but Lenny's Burgers are awesome. Teriyaki Mushroom Swiss. Oh, gosh, those are good. I, I prefer more of like a handmade kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> I haven't had a hamburger in a long time, actually been months. I, I try to avoid eating American beef, if at all possible, and I make exceptions only on very rare occasions. If you watch my Japanese snacks videos, you'll know that I often read food labels, and I, I talk about stuff like artificial colors and preservatives and such. I'm always denouncing artificial sweeteners like aspartame, 
Um, you know, I go on rants about GMOs, Monsanto, Coca-Cola, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP. Thank God it's gone. Um, we're, we're feed a lot. Sorry, we're we're fed a lot of lies by the media. It's just they, they oh, soy is healthy for you. Fats and salt, those are bad. Fluoride is good for your teeth. Running marathons make you healthy. Uh, yeah. Uh, so along those lines, I'm a believer in alternative medicine. My carpal tunnel syndrome condition didn't improve until I went to a naturopathic doctor. That sort of thing, it isn't covered by insurance, so I took a big gamble, and I spent the money on going to a nat naturopathic doctor. See, with a regular doctor, you're lucky if you can spend maybe, at the very most, 10 minutes with him or her. But with a naturopathic doctor, like I, I visited I, I, this guy and I, he talked to me for like over an hour. Holistic medicine is what the name implies. Instead of focusing on symptoms and addressing those, you know, holistic medicine, it looks at the big picture and addresses the overall problems. I knew that carpal tunnel syndrome surgery was the most widely practiced operation and the least successful. And I was learning that uh, CTS is it's not typically a repetitive stress injury as it's often said to be, but it deals more with your body chemistry and hormonal balance. For example, pregnant women, uh, they may develop temporarily CTS, carpal tunnel syndrome, and it clears up after the babies are born. Uh, there are so many environmental factors that can disrupt your hormonal balance, such as the plastics in bottled water, you know, fluoride in your tap water, etc. Uh, so this naturopathic doctor really helped me out a lot. I don't want to say that all modern medicine is bad, but unfortunately there is a lot of big money and politics and pharmaceuticals in medicine instead of a genuine desire to help people improve their health. And it's not to say that your average doctor is a jerk, but there's just so much for them to learn and keep track of that they can't really know everything about everything. And uh, you know, so I, I grew frustrated when I started knowing more about certain stuff than my regular doctors did. And additionally, you know, I, I started going to an acupuncture doctor, Chinese acupuncture doctor, and I had my wife go to one and because uh, we had been trying to have uh, a baby for a while and she had been going to the acupuncture doctor for about a month well, probably less than a month and finally she became pregnant so you know I'm a father because of that I think okay so on to other stuff okay number 16 fish aquariums used to be a big hobby of mine and in fact I had a pet fish named Steve that I named my website after. Um, yeah, I didn't want to use my real name. <laughs> there were anything that was copyrighted. So yeah, that's that's where the stevethefish.net comes from. It's from my, my, my pet fish when I was in college. Uh, I used to keep a 10 gallon tank and I had a subscription to Aquarium Fish magazine that I read each month. I would read it from cover to cover. I was just totally fascinated. That's also why you'll see me sometimes uploading videos of aquariums that I visit in Japan from time to time on my channel. Uh, aquariums are just, they're always so tranquil and relaxing. And I've, I've, I've always been a fairly mellow person, I guess. And so just having a fish aquarium is always just really soothing. Uh, to share a funny story with you, actually, when my daughter was a baby, she would stand in front of the aquarium to watch the fish when she would take a crap in her diaper. <laughs> and that way, my wife and I, we always knew when she needed to have her diaper changed because she would be standing in front of that uh, aquarium and we would just kind of be quiet and just kind of leave her alone and let her do her business. Uh, I really miss having an aquarium. You know, studies have shown that couples with fish aquariums and who spend time watching the fish. They have fewer arguments. I just don't want the responsibility right now 
of pets and I enjoy being able to leave for a week on vacation and not have to worry about my aquarium getting dirty. Uh, if you're an X-Files fan, you'll know that Agent Mulder has a fish aquarium. And I've always thought that having fish would be a difficult thing for an FBI agent who constantly flies around the country. Uh, but actually, I guess it makes more sense than Agent Scully having a dog. Okay, last. Number 17. Okay, here are some of my favorite nerdy TV shows of all time. Uh, when I was a kid, I thrived on Glenn Larson shows like Battlestar Galactica, Buck Rogers, and Knight Rider. I love that stuff. I watched a lot of Star Trek Next Generation in the 80s, you know, in, in uh, elementary school. And later in junior high, I would watch the Star Trek original show in the early evenings. My local UHF channel would show Batman, the Monkees, and Star Trek from like between 5 and 7 p.m. and I would watch like for that whole two hours while doing my homework. The syndicated uh, Next Generation episodes would come on later at 9 p.m. and on Friday nights I would stay up and watch that. Other huge shows that I love are of, of course The X-Files which I just mentioned. Twin Peaks. Actually I once had a cat named Agent Cooper and uh, I can't wait to see this this new third season that's coming out in you know actually what February yeah this month my gosh um, other shows I've really enjoyed uh, were uh, Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Babylon 5 Red Dwarf and of course Mystery Science Theater 3000 okay so those are 17 random things about me and this is the year 2017 so I just chose a number like that. Um, anyhow, that's the it for this video. Um, ask me questions. Uh, stuff you want to know, whether it's model related or nerd stuff related or whatever. Um, this is your chance. I'll have this up for maybe a few weeks. And then I'll, I'll put together like a, a response video with the, the answers and such. You know, just ask me whatever weird questions you'd like. You know, like if you were to ask me, um, do you think that Snoopy could blow up the Death Star? I would have to say no, because you know Snoopy's always getting shot down by the Red Baron, so I don't think he would have he would even stand a chance against a you know Darth Vader and a Tie Fighter. But in a one to one, hand to hand combat, though, you know, with Darth Vader with a lightsaber and Snoopy maybe has a boxing glove on his on his nose it might be a pretty even match I don't know but Snoopy he's always getting shot down so I don't think he could probably blow up the Death Star so um, have at it let me know what you want to ask um, I'll compile a list of questions and uh, get back to you in a couple weeks so, so thanks for watching May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. So long and thanks for all the fish. Goodbye.